What's going on guys, Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net and today we're taking a close look at Yannick Sinner's two-handed backhand technique and I'm going to show you what the secret to his power on that shot is. If you want to find out how he gets so much juice on that backhand, stay tuned because it's coming up next. Alright guys, so let's jump in and get a look at Sinner's backhand technique and see what the secret is to all that power on his two-hander. It's pretty incredible. So we got footage here from 12 KGP Tennis 2022 US Open. This is point play with Sinner and Diego Schwartzman. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel. That's where all this footage is coming from. It's great point play footage. So we've got Sinner here on the near side, right? And a couple things that we can learn from within his backhand technique, and this is something I want to talk about all the time, this applies to the technique, but Sinner has really improved in the last year or so his athletic position and the wideness of his feet and really using the ground to generate pace on his strokes. Look at how low his hips are, look at how down he is, and then look at the width of his base on his backhand. It's very important. It's something that you want to get into a very good athletic position. But let's move forward from here frame by frame and look at some of the keys to his technique and get into that big secret, right? So we see he does something that most players on tour are doing at this point on their two-handed backhand. He will take the racket head, right? and keep it above his hitting hands right here as he brings it back, and then also keep it to the outside or left of the hitting hands, right, to try to create that ATP style two-handed backhand, so he does that right there. Another thing I like about Sinner's two-hander is he doesn't really raise the hitting hands up too much, right? So he doesn't create a longer swing than he needs. He has a fairly short swing in terms of the up and down of the swing itself. He pretty much brings the hitting hand straight back on this particular stroke. They raise up a tiny bit there. And then in this position, again, we can see the racket head is to the outside of his hitting hands once he achieves this position. His legs, again, really important, are bent at this point. He's really gonna use the ground to help generate pace on his two-hander. From this point, guys, what he does and where this power comes from starts pretty much at this stage of the swing. The first thing that we can really notice, right, his chin is overlooking his front shoulder right here. So he's a very big turn on his two-handed backhand. He really coils his body and uses the legs and the coil together. The next thing we can see is his right arm is completely straight now. And the right arm didn't start straight. So if you just go back a little bit, right, the right arm here starts to get straight. And then when we get back to this point, it's completely straight and starts to extend back. Even in this position, the racket head is still slightly to the outside of his hands right here. We can see his left arm, right, right here is still bent. And then from this position, look at that right arm extend and the wrist, his right wrist breaks down, okay? So from here, we can see the right arm is extended. The left arm starts to straighten a little bit more. And this is really the big secret right here on the technique. The tip of his racket head, and we've talked about this on forehands, gets behind the glutes for him. Now that doesn't really apply on the forehand as far as the glutes. It's the tip of the racket getting behind the hitting elbow, but for Sinner, the tip of the racket getting behind the glutes. There is one other player we'll talk about in a little bit who also achieves this position, but Sinner has a very big tip flip of the racket on his two-handed backhand coming from here, tip of the racket extending behind the glutes, the wrist being in a very relaxed position, the right wrist here, and then from this position, the racket is gonna travel to the ball a pretty far distance in a very short period of time, and that's what leads to all that racket head speed. You can also see here, guys, his legs go from bent and they're starting to extend during the swing. So big tip flip behind the glutes and the legs start to extend and the body starts to rotate into contact. Some other things that you can learn here that are very important for technique are number one, his hitting hands can be seen clearly on the left side of his body over here. So his body is not blocking the hitting hands. That's very important to have proper space on your two-handed backhand. If the hands were to be disappeared in front of his torso, I know he's jammed on the stroke and he doesn't have enough space. But in this situation, you can very clearly see the hitting hands are on the left side of the body at contact, which is very important. And then his eyes are looking down at contact with the ball here so his opponent doesn't see where he's aiming his shot on the other side. Just going forward from here, guys, 
We see some other things that are very typical. The racket strings for Sinner will be pointed towards his opponent, Schwartzman, as he's hitting the ball and as he's following through here. So look at those strings pointing towards Schwartzman and turning over. And then he finishes right here. But again, the biggest key for Sinner is this outside racket position, the extension of this arm, and then this giant tip flip. This is the biggest secret number one, where that racket is having to come from and then go to in real time, see how fast that was, in such a short span of time, that's what's helping to generate all that pace. Most players don't achieve this position right here, guys, that Sinner does. And let's put him up side by side with someone else that achieves regularly a similar position. And that person has been referred to as having two forehands or having his backhand equivalent to a forehand by Casper Ruud. So let's look at a side by side of these two guys next to each other. All right. So who is that mystery player we're talking about, right? Casper Ruud referred to Rafael Nadal having a backhand that is equivalent or feels like a forehand because of the speed and spin he gets on that side. So you've got Sinner now on the left side here and Rafa from the 2022 US Open. And we'll do a little comparison and see the similarities here, guys. But basically, right, as we go through the stroke, you can see very similar positions between both guys. Rackethead is above the hands here for both guys as they go through the unit turn. Rafa getting his backhand lined up. One difference for Rafa is the racket is still above the hands, but it's in a much lower position. He essentially brings his racket straight back on his two-handed backhand with that racket head again, though, just tilted up a little bit for that whip and snap, that ATP style backhand. You do not have to bring your two-hander back you know, in a loop position or really high with the racket head to get a lot of pace on your two-hander. You just need to have the other key elements of that ATP style backhand. And Rafa, again, straight arm here, just like Sinner over on this side, right? So now we're looking pretty similar. He's looking over his front shoulder. His shoulders, when you look over like this, will be tilted slightly down as this happens. If you just naturally look over your shoulder, you'll achieve this tilted down position. But every great two-hander has that position. And then from there, guys, we see the flip for Rafa is actually a little bit bigger than Sinner's on this particular backhand. So we came from this position right here, right? And then as he gets ready to pull the racket forward, look at the flip and look where the racket is coming from. It's a long swing that's taking place in a very short period of time, and that means racketed speed. And racketed speed equals spin and equals pace, right? So we can see from here, they both come through. The one difference that stands out between Rafa's two-hander and Sinner's is that Rafa hits with two straight arms on his backhand. He's done this forever, right? He also hits a completely straight arm forehand as well, which he did not hit, FYI, in the beginning of his career, just as a fun fact. Uh, he switched over to that kind of naturally, I'm assuming. But again, really good contact here from both guys. And then they both show the strings to the opponent and finish. But what's the key for both guys? What makes that backhand almost like a forehand? It's as it comes from here, the tip flip gets behind the glutes, okay? Got to get a tip flip that gets behind your glutes before you initiate the swing forward of the ball. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video on how Yannick Sinner gets so much power on his two-handed backhand. If you found this video helpful or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash it like and subscribe button. It helps this channel grow. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see you next time. Thing. So if you want